Welcome to Tech Brother with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load Excel file name and sheet name with data to SQL Server table in SSIS package. So let's go ahead and take a look on our Excel files. Here I have two Excel files. Let's open the one. And this very first Excel has two sheets. So you, know, you notice that we have ID, name and date of birth columns here and in sheet two we have the same columns. So we are going to load the data to one of the table that should have ID, name and date of birth columns. Let's go to the next Excel file and take a look. Here we have uh, only one sheet and the sheet name is my sheet. If you notice that on both of the Excel files, sheet names are very different. So it doesn't really matter. We are going to get that information and load to the SQL Server table as long as the columns are same. Uh, now we need to create a table with the definition, say with the ID, name and date of birth columns. And also we need to have a column called file name and um, sheet name. That's the information we would like to save as well. Let's go to the techbrothersit.com and go to SSIS video tutorials. Under that one, we will be going to the script task. And here we have script task. And then we will be finding Excel source and destination. And number 10, we have how to load Excel file name and sheet name with the data to SQL Server table. Click here. This is going to give us all the information and the code actually. So here is the definition for the table. I could have spent a lot of time on writing this code, but I, don't, I, I want you guys to make use of this website. I have written the post already, script is written, everything is written there. So we will use the, the code from there, create our SSIS package and good to go. Now let's go to the SSMS and here I have a database called the Tech Brothers IT. I'm going to paste my code here to create a table. This is going to be DBO customer table. Let's run that one. It's all set. Now we go to the tables, take a look here and we see DBO customer is created. Let's take a look by writing a, a select query. So we have ID name, date of birth, file name and sheet name. This is the information we need to get from Excel files. Uh, go to the SSDT SQL Server Data Tools and here we will be creating a new package. Right click on the SSIS packages, new SSIS package. We will be creating some variables. Why? Because by using the variables, we can use them in configuration and make our package more dynamic. On different environments such as QA, UAT, production, your folder structure could be different from where you will be reading those Excel files. As long as, and also the database where you are loading the information that can be also different. So you can use these different information in configuration and pass that or changes according to the environment. Let's uh, create this variable called the source folder. That's where our Excel files are. String. And uh, I'm going to get the path from here. So copy it. Go to the SSDT again and pa paste the value here. Next, uh, we'll be providing the information where we will be loading these uh, files. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, first I'm going to tell the schema name because on uh, you might have a, a different schema for your DBO customer. In my case, it was a DBO, so uh, I'm going to provide the DBO. Next, uh, we'll provide the table name. Table name. String type. And in our case, it is a customer. That's why we created the variables here. Tomorrow, if you have to change, maybe this is the sales data schema, this is customer sale or something, you all can, always can pass those values through the configuration for these variables and you do not have to make any changes in your SSIS package. That's great. Now, next part, we will be creating a connection manager as we need to load those Excel files to the database. Right click here in the connection man managers pan go to the new adio.net connection and here we will be creating a connection for tech brothers it database click new we have to provide the sql server instance name here i'm going to select from the drop down right here and then we will provide the database name so it is tech brothers it database test it hit okay Hit OK and we are all good. Here it is in Amir PC backslash equal 2016 Tech Brothers IT. That's not a, a good name. I would uh, rename this one. Let's rename this one to 
we call this one db underscore connection so once we use this uh, connection manager in configuration by just taking a look at the name we can tell oh okay this is database connection so db connection tech browser it so it is pointing to tech browser it database i hit save in case uh, something goes wrong and we will bring uh, the script task here now we are all good we need to go back to the tech brothers it.com and get some script from there see the script is there we are going to use this script uh, couple of things uh, we could have uh, done from here um, we can go simply and type it but this is a lot of code to type it so I'm going to copy and paste it there and uh, then test it uh, now let me go back uh, first and let's uh, map these variables or use these variables in our script task open the script task and here I'm going to use the visual C um, sharp here uh, for the scripting uh, language you can use VB if you are good in that but uh, I'm going to provide the script that's written in this C sharp here we will be selecting the variables so find user variables here we have schema name then we have a source folder and then we have a table name that's all we need from here and then we are gonna click on edit script and get this uh, code uh, you can see that uh, we can copy code from here, but some of the part even of the code is uh, kind of uh, gone uh, See here is uh, gone to the next line or even some of them is here So don't worry about that if you will try to copy from here all the way It is going to copy without any problem, but I have uh, written this code and uh, loaded to the G uh, Google Drive and uh, you can open that link and we can copy from there So I'm going to show you what we copy from here it's, it's much easier I can uh, uh, right click here and uh, go to the select all let me see I, or control a that's select all and copy and now I can go ahead and run put in the notepad just uh, so we can copy and paste quickly from there all right we are here all good the under the namespaces we have to add some namespaces because we will be using functions and instances from those namespaces and if you see here we have windows forms and uh, this these are already these namespaces are already added so we are fine we'll be come back to our script and here we are going to copy this part using system.io these are the three namespaces that we'll be using as we are uh, read in the file information we will be using system.io as uh, we are dealing with Excel connection we will be using system.data.oladb and uh, to write to the SQL server we will be using uh, name this namespace uh, and uh, making connection and everything so let's go back and paste it there the next part uh, we will come to the public main uh, public word main and that's where we need to paste our code so I'm gonna go ahead and find public uh, word main function here and you see that right here so this is all good and from uh, starting from the string I'm gonna go all the way till here so before DTS dot task results so I'm gonna copy this one and go back to the our script and paste it there looks good we can save it and uh, we can uh, build it that will tell us if there is any error or anything build uh, started build succeeded so it means there is no error that's great but uh, there are a few things even it did not throw us error there are a few things we need to take a look here uh, these are the variables we are using I created these variables and then passing uh, the values of our SSIS variables you see that DTS dot variable user folder path if we minimize this part sorry uh, let me bring this part uh, as well so you you see that now I have created a variable called source folder and uh, if we go to the script uh, that I posted it uh, is called folder path uh, so they, there is a different name if you will try to run this package it is gonna fail uh, I, I recommend whatever the name of variable you have created you come back here and at, at least uh, uh, correct them so it was source folder so in our case uh, see source uh, folder so we are good with this one schema name and table name looks good schema name and table name exactly fine these are uh, case sensitive so make sure uh, you have correct uh, 
uh, case uh, for these uh, variables. And one more thing here, you see that SQL connection details that connection. This is the connection we are using from our SSIS package. Uh, here it is a DB connection. So I left, uh, I did by purpose, uh, uh, I rename uh, this one to the DB underscore connection underscore tech brother because I wanted you to, to wanted you to understand how to make a change according to your connection manager. So once you come back here, here we will be making that change. We call this one DB underscore connection underscore tech brothers IT. In your case, you will not be put in tech brothers IT. Whatever the name you have uh, for your connection manager here. Uh, that's what you will be using them. So go back to the editor and we are all good here. Let's uh, maximize this part so we can read the code. Let's walk through quickly uh, about these lines. Uh, here I'm declaring the variables and the same in the value of these uh, uh, SSIS uh, variables into these uh, variables. Uh, this part of uh, code is going to read uh, the directory information. Uh, see the folder path. So it will uh, go to that directory and get all the file information. So once we have all the files, uh, uh, we can loop through them and load one after one. Here we are declaring a variable called the string full path and I will be building that information uh, and using it further down. So here is our uh, SQL connection, my adio.net connection. So I created a new instance uh, and that's uh, using our uh, DB connection tech brothers uh, adio.net uh, connection that we have already created. Now get the book Excel file one at a time. So uh, as remember here, we got all those uh, file names uh, we can loop through by using for each uh, loop uh, here once we loop that we will use file dot name uh, so we have a folder full path uh, we will add backslash and then uh, use the file name uh, so this will become a complete path uh, for our uh, file here see this one it will be this path uh, backslash uh, this whole uh, thing now come back to the script take a look here so we have a file name, I declare another variable and put it blank and then I said okay file name is equal to file name, file dot name. Why? So I can use this variable, I need to use this variable in my query. Remember we need to log or put the information for file name and sheet name. So that's one of the reason I'm declaring a variable here. So I don't have to use a file dot name everywhere, so I can use this variable anywhere. Um, next part, uh, creating a couple of variables here, string, uh, connection string, header, yeah, string, header, and then header is yes, uh, and we have the header in each of the sheet. The connection string is equal to, is a provider, Microsoft ac.oladb 12.0, then fi uh, file full path, so this is our complete Excel path, that's combination of our uh, folder path backslash uh, file name, uh, it will change on uh, each of the iteration. So it is going to make a connection to that Excel file and then uh, open, uh, create a new connection, find by using this connection string. Then it is going to open a connection and we will read all the information. So see, get OLEDB schema table. So it will return us a table and that will have information such as uh, we will get the table name like, like sheet names from there. Uh, we have the file names are already that's what we are doing here so we are looping through those files and then we need the sheet names there could be multiple sheets on each of the file once we save that into this data table we can use the for each loop to loop through those sheets and here i'm saying okay if the name of that table is has a dollar sign that means it's a sheet name because excel sheet has the dollar sign at the end when they will save now uh, once uh, the sheet name is there, we save the sheet name into sheet name variable and here what we are doing, uh, we are getting the top one record from that sheet. So once we have that, we can get the column names. Uh, that will help us uh, to, to uh, make, make sense if these columns are in database or not. So we will get those columns. And then next uh, we are preparing header column list uh, so we can run against our database to get matching columns for the table. Uh, th this is where, uh, remember we have uh, files here that has the uh, ID, name and date of birth. If you have another column here, let's say address. So we don't have address in the customer table, but it, it, we want to load the matching column. We don't really care about this uh, column. So if it is there, uh, fine, it, they just ignore it. That, that's the reason we are taking these uh, column names and then validating against the database. So whatever matches with the database, that's the columns we are going to load. We will ignore this one. Uh, 
here there could be multiple things i mean there are tons of scenarios and it's hard to come up with every scenario and explain it if you don't care about that let's say if that's the part you can you don't want to compare against your database if it is fail like let's say it does not match you then what you do i have another video that tells you if the column list does not match you uh, you can uh, log to the table and uh, don't load that file so go watch that video i am covering pretty much every scenario but in this uh, uh, video i am considering like okay if uh, that is uh, if there is extra column i'm going to just ignore it and load only the matching columns so i build that and then i'm going to go against the database use this query and it is going to validate all those columns and get me the matching columns now once i have matching columns i can uh, right here this is the part this is going to run the query uh, this query what we build against the database and get sql column list so matching column list once we have that one we are going to use that in our select query so this is a uh, where we are going to this is a connection string so this is a pointing to axel and we are saying okay select column sql column list matching columns in our case uh, where which were which are present in the excel sheet and sql server table and then what you do i'm adding a, a file name variable remember file name we saved uh, from here right here so we could use so this is the file name this is excel file name i'm adding that as a constant so this value see i put a single quotes around it and said file name and then i'm using sheet name from the sheet so see this information will come select id name and all that from excel but these are the hard uh, values I'm putting sheet name and file name as a part of select query so I'm building uh, a select query with three columns uh, or whatever the columns are coming from sheet and these two file name and sheet name as uh, I got these from the variables so I use that run against uh, my uh, excel file and then load a data table called dt1 once I have the dt1 what I'm doing I'm finally writing that information to the sql server table so we are using sql bulk and here we are telling the name of the table so we have schema name dot table name that's where we want to write the information and for each word column in dt dot column okay go ahead and do the mapping for uh, the columns present in dt one with the uh, with the destination table and once uh, okay for any matching columns uh, then go ahead and write uh, uh, the information from dt1 to the uh, sql server table and that's it so you see that we are looping through the excel file then we are looping through the uh, excel sheets here and then loading the information so we are all good here let's close this one that's a lot of talk i know um let's uh we are good here no records uh save the script I will always recommend saving again and start. It will load the information. Completed successfully. Green is really good, but sometimes it does not do what we expect. So till we don't verify here, we are going to go ahead and verify. Now we see that this is the data coming from sheet one. And you can see this is the file name. This is sheet one. And this is our uh, same file and different sheet and this is the third uh, second sorry second file and uh, that has only one sheet so it doesn't matter as long as uh, your uh, you have uh, that columns that match with your uh, with your uh, destination table you want to load it this is how it is going to work uh, this is really good because once you have the file name you have sheet name you can always tell like from which sheet this data was loaded thanks very much for watching this video i will put the link in the description uh, so you don't have to go to Tech Brothers IT, find the video, okay, where is the script and all that. You can click on the, uh, go to description of a video, click uh, on the link there. It will open the script for you. Thanks very much and uh, I appreciate your time and I will see you guys in next uh, video.